Happy Monday, everybody. I hope you've had a great weekend. Welcome to another Yellow Chair, where today we're going to be talking about what the Bible means when it talks about heaven. And trust me, it's really good news. What do you think about when you think about heaven? Well, I want you to picture for a moment a place that you would consider paradise, a place where you know you would catch your breath and feel at absolute rest and holistic peace. Well, when the Bible talks about heaven, it's getting at this idea of total rest and peace with no more fear of suffering, where you know everybody has your best interest in mind. And unlike the commercials where we see babies in clouds with harps, uh, the Bible wants to bring it down to earth in a way we can understand. Uh, it really is speaking in the beginning in Genesis of a garden where everything is very good and God and man are in right fellowship with each other and with one another. And there's total rest and total peace before sin enters the world and wrecks it. But then the biblical narrative is such that God wants to restore what was very good. And we see a sneak preview of that in the middle of the Bible then, when Jesus is on the cross between two thieves in Luke 23, where one of the thieves asked Jesus to remember him. And this thief is recognizing that Jesus is good and innocent and unworthy of death. And he is putting his faith in him that he is the Messiah. And Jesus says to this thief, today you'll be with me in paradise. Now, Paradisos is the word in the Greek, and it comes from the Hebrew word gar. In other words, what Jesus actually says to this thief is, Today you'll be with me in the garden. So the Bible begins in a garden, and then in the middle of the Bible at the cross, Jesus is once again speaking of a garden. Now, we fast forward to Revelation, the last chapter of the Bible, where John the Revelator, he has a vision of heaven and earth becoming one again. And in chapter 23, when he sees the city that's come down from heaven that has taken up its place on earth, he describes a garden, a garden city. And it has the same elements that we saw in the Garden of Eden in Genesis. In other words, what God is trying to speak to us about heaven is that it's not so much unlike the earth that we know. It's just an earth without sin and suffering where everybody has each other's best interests in mind. So picture that place of paradise that you want to visit, uh, that you'd love to kick back and find out that a loved one has paid for the trip for you, that it's a free trip for you to take. That's really what Jesus has done for us on the cross. He paid for our sin that we can be reconciled to God and have eternal life with him in a paradise, in a garden that's full of rest and restoration. Now, it doesn't end there. It doesn't stop there. Think about what could wreck a paradise trip for you, even if it was free. I'll tell you what could wreck it is bad company that you run into people that you realize don't have your best interest in mind, that are trying to take advantage of you where you don't feel safe on this trip, that could wreck what would otherwise be an amazing trip. Or what could take that trip to paradise and make it even better? You find out it's not only been paid for by a loved one for you, but it's also been paid for other loved ones you enjoy fellowship with to go with you. That would make it even better. And you see, that is the key to also understanding heaven is it's not just a place like paradise um it's a place with rich fellowship where we are with people of like-mindedness and like-heartedness that want to love God and love each other, that have each other's best interests in mind, whose hearts have been transformed by the love of God and the nature of God entering in. They've had this born-again experience, the Bible calls it, where the nature of God has come into their lives and transformed their hearts that they can be a safe haven for other people. And you see, that's the other side of heaven. It wouldn't be heaven if God just let everybody in that didn't want fellowship with him and that wanted to keep their own best interests first and foremost. What makes heaven heaven is not just this paradise-like city of total rest, but rich fellowship with God and with one another. And God has revealed himself to be Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And it's in Jesus Christ, through his Holy Spirit, that we can also have rich fellowship. And so that's what heaven is about. For whatever suffering and sacrifice comes in this life, on the other side, 
Jesus says, you can join me in a garden paradise with rich fellowship with God and one another. And by the way, you can have a sneak preview of that right now when you enter back into fellowship with God. You are by nature a sinner and you need forgiveness of sin. You need to be reconciled first to God and then you can be reconciled to other people. You need God's nature into you. And so you can get a sneak preview of how good it's going to be one day by getting the Holy Spirit to come and enter and become one with your spirit on the inner man The love of God poured out in your heart. This is the gift of God. It's been paid for for you. That you can have paradise a little bit here and a lot forever more. Have you received this free gift? It's there for the taking. All the best to you this week. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Yellow Chair. If this information was helpful to you, would you do us a favor and click the like button on our YouTube videos to help us in the algorithm and get this information out to others? Also, if you have a friend or an acquaintance that you think this could be helpful to, make sure you share it with them and hit the subscribe button as well and we'll drop a new video for you each week that will hopefully help you in all things pertaining to life and godliness because we want fullness of joy for you. Have a great day.